Hey, what's going on guys? Today I'll be going over the word search problem and in this problem you're given a 2D board and a word and you're supposed to find out if the word exists in the board. And a thing to note here is that word can be constructed from letters that are horizontal and vertical. And uh, the same letter cell may not be used more than once. So in this example we're given the word sad and we're supposed to find out if sad exists in this board. And as we can see it does because this SAD right here. How do we go about solving this problem? So the brute force solution would be just to find out every single substring combination inside the board and see if SAD is in there. But that's very inefficient. And the way we want to go about doing this is by using a depth first, using a depth first search. So we want to call a depth first search on every single cell. And we check to see if S is equal to the cell value. So these depth first searches are all going to return false right away and we're eventually going to get to this point and now we call our depth first search again and we're calling it on just the value AD now because we've already checked our S, we, we know it's there. Now we do our depth first search for AD and we do that search in four different directions, up, down, left and right. And what we'll notice is the left index is actually out of bounds so we're going to have to account for that. And uh, so we do our depth first search up and we check to see if A is equal to A. So the second letter here is equal to the current letter and it is. So we go on and then we do the adjacent cell depth first search. We just look at our adjacent cells and we check our B now because that's our only remaining adjacent cell. And now we check to compare if B is equal to D, it's not. So that means this depth first search doesn't have the solution and we do recursive backtracking. And now we're gonna check this F right here. And this F is not equal to A. So we know to backtrack and we go down here and we check this SA here that checks out. And then we're eventually gonna go to D here and at this point we find out that SAD is in, is in fact in this board and we just return true. And in the event that this particular S doesn't have the word sad, we would check all the remaining S's. So our only remaining S is right here. So we would do a depth first search in four directions for this S as well. So I'm going to go over the code of the algorithm I just explained and we have this recursive method called DFS and we'll get to that later. But what we first want to do is check to see if the board is empty. If it is, we can just return false. We know that there are no possible words that can be found if the board's empty. And we're looping through all our elements and we're calling DFS on each particular cell. But for the cells that aren't equal to S, we just return false right here. We have this condition here where if the uh, first index or the first letter in the word is not equal to the particular cell, we just return false here. So we're gonna loop through here and then we're just gonna keep getting falses until we reach this S here. And once we reach this S here, this is the point where we do our depth first search in four directions. So we have this I plus one, that means we're checking downwards. I minus one, that means we're checking upwards. J plus one means we're checking to the right. And J minus one, we're checking to the left. And what you'll notice is that the word decreases by the first letter because after we checked our S, we can get rid of it. Now our word is just AD and we, we really need to only check to see if AD exists now. So we keep checking this word and this word keeps getting smaller and smaller until it's empty. And then when it's empty, we know that the word exists in there and we return true. So there is a couple of things that you have to keep account of. And the main one is the index out of bounds thing. So we have this condition here. And what this condition will do is check to see if you're doing the DFS on a cell that's in bounds. So we check to see if I is less than zero or I is greater than or equal to the length of the board. And we do the same thing with J. And if it is, that means the index is out of bounds and we return false. So another thing we have to take into account is that once we have checked a letter, so let's say for instance, once we check this S, we have to mark it as used. So then it doesn't all 
the uh, subsequent depth first searches don't use this S again. So then in which case we mark this as a unique character and I just marked it as exclamation point, but you guys can probably use whatever you want. And we have to also store the initial state of the board to reset the board once our depth first search ends. So each depth first search call is gonna mark off the letter that the letters that have currently been used. And once the depth first search call ends, that the initial board is reset. So that's why we have this line of code here. We set the cell to be equal to the initial board. So let me go over an example of this. Say you're checking the depth first search going upwards. So we first mark off this S and then we mark off this A. And then we get to this B and we recursively backtrack. And when we backtrack, we reset the state of A to be what it originally was. And then we reset the state of S to be what it originally was. So then the state is actually pertained and the this uh, changing of the board doesn't affect any of the subsequent depth first search calls. So for this example here, we're gonna do a depth first search downwards and then to the right, and we will eventually find the word SAD bad so that exists and then we output true and that's our answer and going over the runtime the runtime is 4 to the power of l times n times m and l is the length of the word and we have this four because we're doing the depth first search in four different directions and then n times m because we're, this is basically just looping through the whole board and we're doing the depth first search call for every single cell even though a lot of the cells will just return false right away because the first letter in the word doesn't equal to the cell value. And our space complexity is O of 1. If I go back to the code here, we never actually allocate a new array or anything like that for the board. We just modify the values of the existing boards and reset the values. So. The space complexity is actually out of the power of one. If this video helped you out, then be sure to leave a like and consider subscribing. Thanks for watching. I'll see you guys in the next one.